Hi and welcome back to the House of Langford channel. Today is a little bit a little bit different. I am going to show you some of the beads that I've bought recently. So this is a bead haul video. Um, I've done a lot of sewing and a lot of crochet recently but I have still been buying beads in the background and I made some charms last month so it's time to show you the things that I've bought. So a lot of these are actually from a Facebook group um, run by a lady called Victoria Millington. Um, it is a gemstone dish dash group and what you do is you purchase throughout the month and then you get it all sent to you in one go so you only have to pay postage for once. So the first lot I've got, I've got two little boxes and they were from August and they were actually shipped on the 1st of August which is the day we got married. So I haven't actually opened any of these, I'm having to <laughs> slice them all open now. Because I've been waiting to do this video so I can show you what I've actually got. If I can get into the sellotape. There we go. So the first one. Ooh, I'd forgotten about these. We've got some really, really pretty rose quartz carved roses. You can see a little detail here when they flash up. So they're little roses and they are going to be either earrings or maybe some necklaces, a little pendant or earring, obviously not the whole chain, <laughs> setting a new trend now. Um, yeah, so they're perfect for rings, they're perfect for earrings and they're perfect for little pendants. So you can do lots of little sets for them, um, so they're going to look really, really sweet. And they're going to be great for my upcoming shows as well. And to go with those, we've got, I believe this is Agate. I'm going to have to check my invoice later to work out what they all are. But this is a really deep, it's almost red. It's like a ruby red sort of colour. I believe it's Agate. So I will double check and put it in the comments at the bottom um, when I work out what it is. But it's faceted. I think these are... 8 mil, 8 mil round, so they're 8 mil in size. And again, they're perfect for earrings, perfect for sets, perfect for rings, or even just restringing them all and having them all as a necklace. And I think that's actually rather pretty. And that just about goes round, so there's about an inch at the back left for a clasp. So if I put some spacer beads in the middle, that'll come out really nice. And I think gold always goes well with colours like that. So nice and rich inside. So we have a second box from August. I'm just hoping I don't cut my fingers. There we go. Well, this one's a little blue box. So I've had a red, red, pink box. Put those back in there. And then this one is blue. So we have. What are these? These are lapis. Lapis Lazuli and they are a really deep blue colour and they've got flecks of pyrite in them. Now these are flat, these are like these are called coins because they're flat top and bottom, but they're actually round. And did you know that Cleopatra used to grind up lapis lazuli to paint her eyes blue? A little history lesson for you now. Um again. They're really pretty on their own. So rings and earrings are going to be perfect for these. I'm not sure. I've got lots and lots of other lapis that I can put it with. So I think these would be perfect as earrings. And then I can put it with something else for a pendant or um, a ring. Which is great. We've got one more strand in here. And these are some mega chunky beads. These, I believe, are quartz or quartzite. They might even be agate, but they are big wheels, look. So they're very similar in shape in terms of flat either side, but they're round. But these ones are drilled for the center. So they look like big wheels and they've got really nice vein pattern on them. I'm not sure it'll pick it up. They've got really nice veining on them. So they and they're faceted as well, so you can see the light catching them. So nice chunky jewellery. Again, I could just put some spaces in them. 
and you'd get a really really chunky necklace which is great there's one more thing in this box which isn't blue it is white and it is a howlite cab cabochon i'm just going to take it out of plastic so that it doesn't affect the camera there we go and i love cabochons because i can wire up them But it's not going to focus. It's got this, so how light has a lovely veining on it, and it's actually really pretty on the other side as well. So I might have to try and think of a way that I can show off both sides with my wrapping. So I'm going to be very, very delicate in the way I wrap it, whether it's just a few pieces of wire around the outside, or whether I net it, um, which is like a blanket stitch for any of my sewing followers out there. Um, of wire around the edge just to hold it in place um, and really let the stone show itself off rather than me have to go really elaborate with the wire work so that's going to come out really pretty and again that's just a pendant this is a really nice size and then I can just add it on a very simple plain chain or I can maybe bead that as well so there's lots of options for cabochons some people have been using them in um, projects for soutache and you can also put chain mail around them as well and make bezels out of chain mail which is quite cool um but they're both things that i don't really like doing and i don't really like stringing stuff very plainly i like to make a lot of my own components so whether that's a lot of um chain work so i will wire my beads together and create a chain as opposed to just putting them on a piece of um beading wire and I feel that lets the stones really show it themselves off. And I don't really have to do much else after that. But it does take a little bit longer when you're working with wire and wrapping everything. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I love working with wire because it's so malleable. And you can get so many different... Um, there's so many different ways of using it. You get different effects all the time depending on what you're working with so that was the first my first lot of boxes from victoria millington on facebook and that was from august the next lot i have is from september so but the first thing i did before before i went <laughs> before i received this box i actually went to totally beads and you all have seen that in my september roundup that Emma and I went to Totally Beads in Clacton. In the last video I said Colchester, but it's not, it's Clacton. And um, we made our Ponsettia reefs, which mine still isn't finished, but oh well, Christmas is not that far away. So I'm going to show you what I got from there before I continue with the rest of the beads that I've got recently. Now, I spent a little bit more than I was planning to But they're all so pretty yeah we're not going to tell you how much i spent <laughs> um so the first thing that i picked up was actually a bead mat because they stop your beads from sliding all over the place and it means you can store everything on there on the table and it's not going to move um and also if you're working with beading thread you can just stab the needle into the mat and it will hold it in place for you so you don't have to get up and drop your needle and then try and find it later but i keep losing all my mats so it's nice to just buy one every now and then when i'm out and i actually see them because they're not that expensive they're only about maybe a pound for a nice bead mat and they've got they're lovely and soft as well which is great um and because i've got some classes coming up so next weekend i'm teaching beaded baubles and i needed some needles so I've got some beading needles, which are great. And now I've remembered that I've got them. I need to pack them ready for next weekend so I can make some more balls. Now I've been working on a lot of um, pins and brooches and badges and things um, for upcoming stalls. And I keep running out of E6000 glue. Now it's the best glue I've found recently. Not recently. I've been using E6000 for a long time now. It's the best glue I've used for a long while, which dries clear and pretty much sticks anything to anything. So it's perfect 
for my jewelry making so i had to get two tubes but they only had the little tubes um so i've got two of those tubes but they do come with a smaller applicator like a nib at the top so it acts like a lid you just unscrew it and it's a fine tip at the end um which means that i can save on glue as well but i only picked up one of those because i thought i don't need two because i'm not going to use both at the same time um what else do we have i bought quite a few cabochons because i'm hoping to make some christmas gifts with them and they had some new ones that i've not seen before um so i'm just getting all of those out of the way so i can show you what the other bits are that i got and oops there's a couple more oh i did get two applicator lids look because they come free so i do have two i think it's probably a good idea actually because if one starts to dry up and gets stuck then i'm going to need to try and get that lid off but if i've got two then that's a lot easier to work with right so i have got i don't know if i've got two different sizes or if i've got the same size these are glass beads and they're in rainbow order so i used to be able to get slightly bigger ones that were about eight mil but these are about six mil in size and they were donned as bubblegum bracelets all i do is make simple stretchy bracelets for kids with these because they're glass and the most of them are spray painted but it means if, if they come apart and they break it's not it's not that bad Whereas if it was gemstone, then I'd be a little bit more worried. Um, but these are just a cheap alternative for the kids, basically. But look at all those colours. So much colour. Um, and they look great. So you can um, wear them all down your arms. So you can have like four or five. And they are just really pretty and fun, really. Um, but yeah, my bubblegum bracelets are going to come back. Now that I've got some more beads. Um, the rest in here is all gemstones so I can't you can't go to totally beads and not buy gemstones and I love working with gemstone chips so I found they had this lovely love really pretty strand now it's quartz but it's rutilated quartz um, so there are flecks of black which is generally it tends to be tourmaline um but this one also has gold in it so it's gold rutilated quartz can you see the gold so i'm always up for looking for different stones that i can work with and i've worked with rutilated quartz before but not in this form so i've had um square beads before where the, the hole draws all the way through so they're flat um and i've worked with cabochons before but i've never seen it in chip form so i had to get a strand of that so i will make that up into a tree of life i think um you can never go you can never go wrong with a tree of life pendant to be honest um not sure if you can see there is one actually hanging up behind me um but i think it's a little bit too high for my camera um and then the other strand i got was tourmaline so this is all the different colors of tourmaline and i picked this one up because the chips are a lot smaller than i've worked with before normally you get tourmaline in bigger chunks um particularly in chip form but these are a little bit smaller so you've got pinks there's greens sometimes you get blues sometimes you get the gold colors so i'm going to really enjoy working with those and again tree of life because they're going to be nice and delicate so i can make smaller ones um and then I wonder if I've got a smaller one here. Maybe not. I did have one here on the table, but I must have put it away. That's what happens when sometimes I tidy up. Um, so that's going to be really, really pretty. And I'm hoping to make some really delicate um, jewellery pieces with that as well, because it's nice and small. The rest, I think... Oh, wait, I've got one strand of hematite. Let's find the end of that one. There you go. So hematite rounds. These are six mil again. 
six mils are nice easy size to work with and i can put those with a lot of things as well because they're silver in color or gray silver like gunmetal color um so they'll go with a lot of different things and it will bring out the colors as well of other things so um they go nicely with gold they go nicely with really bright colors um and then the other things i got which those hematite might actually join at some point is i got some strands of banded agate now you can get banded agate just in one color strands but totally bead stock them in all colors so i have rainbow of agate now these ones are i think these ones are eight mil and they're really pretty so you've got all the different striping and colors you can see that purple one right at the bottom and the blue one they've got white stripes that run through them so it's just where the dye hasn't quite gone all the way through the stone and you get this lovely banded effect so i might do some bubble gum style bracelets with those as well but i also bought a different size so i'm going to keep one of those out just to show you the size difference so these are eight mil so eight mil in um diameter or width i think it is i got two strands of the i think these are they look a lot smaller i think these might be four mil not six mil and again they're just really pretty there's lots of colors there so that's those ones i'm going to hold up the larger one so you can see the difference okay so the one on my on this one is eight mil and the other two are four mil so you can see there's quite effectively you're looking at this bit one being double the size of these but they're all really pretty so i'm going to enjoy working those up into lots of bracelets and potentially just a very simple chain necklace so i just chain them all together um with wire and yeah that's going to come out really nice so looking forward to uh, working on those the easiest thing for me to get back into my wire work is to make a chain so a beaded chain and i love teaching it as a class because once they make all their components and they put them all together they go oh i've made a chain i have actually made a finished piece and you don't if you make it long enough you don't need to put a clasp in it you can just throw it over your head and, it, and you can wear it instantly and i think that's the instant gratification you get from working on a piece of chain in um whether it's gemstones or just random beads um, I think I've recently taught it in a class and we used one time we used left like old jewellery pieces that they wanted to re reuse and make into something new um, which was really lovely to see because everybody had something different and then prior to that we used just a mixed box of beads that we had and again each one was different and it's lovely to see them made and just and then as soon as they're done they just put them on which is great because this it shows that they're proud of it and they've learned something and, and i show you the you two different ways of wrapping them whether it's just a simple eye loop on each end or i show you how to do a wrapped loop so you can combine the two the only difference with between them is that a wrapped loop you can't open afterwards so you need an open loop or an eye pin loop in order to connect to it or you wrap to it whilst you're creating another wrapped loop i'll have to do a video on that to explain it a little bit better so the last few things i got from totally beads other than our lovely christmas wreath was all the cabochons now i found i found some lapis lazuli in two different sizes i found a blue gold stone like a navy gold stone in the larger size and then i found lots of these now these are actually glass but what they've done is they've sandwiched flowers between two cabochons so you can see the join in the side and the dried flowers inside and these are great because wherever they're joined there's a groove so you can just put a piece of wire around it pull it nice and tight and wrap at the top and that will hold it in place you don't need much more to hold those together so I've got the smaller one and then this is the right way for this one so you can see it's a lot bigger again it's two pieces of glass together but that's the right side of the flower so you've got a nice bright blue I'm going to show you that one up a lot bit closer as well 
So there's lots of little flowers in those. But if I spin it around, it's a slightly different texture to the petals in the flower because the dye only sits on one side. It doesn't necessarily soak all the way through a flower petal. So it's really lovely to see the difference. So when you're wrapping these, and you if you were to wire wrap them this, the same way I've just explained how to do that one, you'd be able to wear it whichever way you like. And so I've got it in the blue, and I've got one in the pink. And again, the pink one is lighter on the back same as the blue and then because i love the tree of lives i found these ones now these are again these can be either way you like so i'm going to show you first with the tree in front so what i think it is is a piece of acetate which is what i use for when i'm doing um when i'm inserting things into my resin pieces so the tree is a piece of acetate and then they've got the flowers in the background dyed in different colours. And there's a couple of butterflies on there as well. But you could have it so that the leaves sit in front of the tree. Or behind the tree. So I've got it in the green. What's this one? This one's a white. So it's like a snowy one. And then I've also got it in the pink. And I rather like that. It's like blossom. So I've got three different seasons of those trees and again i'm just going to try and wrap them very very simply and see how they come out basically um next i'm going to show you the lapis lazuli um cabochons that i've got so i could use the um queens with these that i bought um from victoria millington and i'm going to show you the navy goldstone as well now this one was five pound fifty the navy goldstone it was the only one left oh it's actually working it can you see the sparkle in this stone it is a man-made stone but i mean isn't that just so pretty it's like they've trapped the night sky in a stone so it's flat on one side so the definition of a cabochon is something that's flat on one side and domed on the other side and I mean just look at it how could I leave that on the shelf there was only one I was like I'm not leaving it I'm taking it um so I have one in the in the navy goldstone and then I spotted a lapis lazuli one as well so I was like I have to have that one too I love the color in it somebody recently asked me to wire up a heart cabochon or a, a, a domed heart of lapis lazuli and i have absolutely loved working on it. it just needs one more bead and then it's finished so i can show you that next month but look at the gold pyrite that is trapped within the lapis it's such a deep color there's a vein of gold running through the front as well now they had a few of these and i just you, you basically just pick the ones you want off of the um card that they're stuck to and because i thought it would make a nice set so i've got the larger one and then I found two little ones. I found more, but I, I wanted to get to a couple of little ones so I can make a little set with them. So I don't know whether... The, originally I was going to make them as earrings, but I think they're a little bit big. What do we reckon? Do they suit me? So maybe earrings and a necklace. Like so. Or I might... I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show you these like this. There you go. Might do all three as a necklace. So they're sort of joined together in some way. Um, or even like this. Can you see that? So whether they're next to each other or separate. Um, so that is going to be my next um, little project, I think. I've got, I've got a piece of Labrador I'm working on. And I've got a, the lapis heart that I'm working on. I think I'm going to wire up the tree cabochon so I've just shown you before I move on to the lapis that would be my big project I think that would take me through to the new year possibly I've got to sit and plan that I think that's one of those it's one of those sometimes I plan sometimes I don't so 
sometimes I just let the wire and the stone let me know what they want to do. Um, but I, I think I'm going to sit and plan that I'm going to have to draw around them and work it all out. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was our Totally Beads trip. Emma bought so much more than me. But she's actually made them up and sold quite a few bits of hers since um, since September. So I can't really complain. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was our that was my little haul from Totally Beads. And then next up, I've got a couple more parcels from um, Victoria Millington. Now the second lot were from was shipped the end of September. We're going to open these up these feel quite heavy so we shall see so i'm going to undo both of them at the same time no i haven't got five of them okay so this one says 350 grams and what i think this is oh, i need to cut off a stop oh. what i think this is is a bead scoop so bead scoop is basically when you have lots and lots of random beads together and you just scoop out a certain weight so you get a nice mix Oh no, it's not. Something different. So I've got some. These are Amazonite. And these are really, really cute little hearts. Now the string's actually broken or been cut. So I'm going to show you. It's like a very pale greenish blue colour. Um, and these are called Amazonite. And they're faceted. Oh wait, no, I've got two different sets. Those are smooth. And then the ones in my hand, which I thought were off of that strand as well, are actually faceted. So, can we see it shining? Let's see all the shapes on that. So those ones are actually faceted, but they're sim very similar colour. Very similar colour. So, this because they're so delicate, they are going to be earrings and rings. Um... I do have some larger um, Amazonite hearts, I believe. So they may end up being a set with one of the larger ones as well, which would be really sweet. Um, and that's a perfect Christmas present, just to buy a, t a very delicate set. Um, oh, these are all separate. A very delicate set for a, a, what, a girlfriend or a friend or a wife um, or a fiance. Um, yeah, because they're lovely and delicate and heart shapes never go out of fashion, do they? Now, the next one, this strand has all been cut up. I wonder if it's because it was to fit it in the box. Um, however, these are agate. Now, they're twist, slightly twisted. So you can see it's slight, It's not. it doesn't sit flat. It's slightly twisted in shape. So it looks like it's spinning. Now, these are all... They're all dyed in the blue colour but they're all so different. So this one's got lots of vein work going through it. This one's got a nice block of colour at the bottom, but again, it's got the vein in at the top or bottom. Um, this one is, look at that, it's like a giant eye. So that's really cool. I've got six of these. This one's a very deep colour. It's really taken that dye really well. So that's nice as well. This one is very clear, actually. Very clear. Look at that. Can you see me? So I can see right through that. It's lovely. And then the last one is like this. It's got a lot of white patching on it. But look at the back. I mean, look, that's like the wow factor. So these are brilliant for giant, for nice pendants. And whether they're sat this way or that way, they're going to be really cool. Um, I tend to do pendants about between about five, five to fifteen pound if they're just very plain. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if they're popular this Christmas because they won't take very long to work up, which is great. Um, the, I'm not really sure what these are. I'm going to have to check. They could potentially be opal, but I'm not sure. They're random chunks. They might even be rose quartz. They're random chunks of um, stone, but they're faceted in these random shapes. So they're all different. 
it'd be nice to see these would be great as just little pendants as well i think i like to do lots of little pieces on my stool so that people feel like they can still get something pretty but they don't have to pay a huge um price tag to go with it and just a very simple pendant seems to work really well now what i have stopped doing i stopped making earrings because every time i made loads of earrings they would be i couldn't store them properly so they all tarnished and then i just stopped making them for shows and for events but actually they were one of my best sellers so it's something i'm going to revisit and see if i can get some more made up i haven't really got very long though i've only got a few weeks left till the end of november and i've got two shows right at the end of november so the other box that came in september oh has the other half of that strand there's the other ones i think it's opal i will check um but they're all different you can see there that they're all different shapes and so they're very similar in size but they're all different shapes and they're great because it means that you not each one is different basically now what are these I've got a feeling this is kyanite. Now I love kyanite because it can come in various different colours. Is it kyanite? It might be something else. Have I got two strands or three? I've got three strands. I think I've got one of each size. Yeah, four, six and eight mil in what I think is kyanite, but it may be appetite. They're very similar. In terms of colour and saturation and sparkle, so these have got they've all they've got like a blue colour, a brown hint to them. They've actually got like a sparkle as well, which is really cool. Let's just gonna wrap them. There we go. Look at that. It's so pretty. It's like looking at the world from a distance. Imagine if you were in space and that's what you saw, just the world like that. Oh, this one, that one's a really pretty one. And it just shimmers. They're so pretty. I bought one of each strand because I want to work them together. So maybe do like a graduated um, chain. So you've got smaller ones than some of the medium size and then some of the larger ones as well. Um, and that would be great to make matching earrings too. I'm really looking forward to working with those because they're so pretty. I've recently found that I store a lot more beads than I work with. So I kind of need to stop buying gemstones and beads. I need to be working on what I've got. Now I did start that. So recently I took a box of older stones that I've had for a long time now and just took them with me to a fair and just sat there and worked with them. And that was really nice to do because it gave me gave them a new purpose um and i i can see how my style has changed since i bought them as well because what they're becoming now is not necessarily what i originally had planned for them and sometimes i mean like i said before i let the stones tell me what they want and i'm a huge believer in the fact that things will come when you need them most so if i'm not meant to be working with a stone that day i'll know and i either won't be able to find it or it just won't go right so when i'm working away it just won't feel right it won't look right to me and then i'll have to just put it away and come back to it another day when it does feel better um and then i'll find something else to work on in the meantime and usually that's that's where my energy needs to go so the last box now there's not actually a lot in here i say that there's one two oh i've bought more of those stones but this time i've only got two strands so i'm going to show you them quickly because you've already seen them so there must have been some left over from um september but i've ended up buying another two strands because clearly i haven't opened the boxes since i bought them um and what victoria does is she just puts them back on facebook and you can 
say how many you want there and then and I've obviously forgotten that I've ordered them before and bought a couple more but like I said they're really pretty so don't mind what I've also got in here is a very very delicate strand of shell hearts aren't they so sweet so these might become stitch markers actually I think they're going to be really pretty to sit on um knitting on crochet projects they'll be really pretty but then I might actually make some earrings with them as well very quick little earrings because I think they might actually be a really good seller this Christmas um, and there's so many different colours on there so I just have to sit and pair them up and then see if I can get some earring sets out of them I've also got a strand of drops now these are amethyst they are faceted and they're just so pretty it's not a very long strand but they are very very pretty and again earrings these would be perfect so I might do some tassely type ones though and have a few drops um, just hanging from a little bit of chain or just even a very long wire um, and see how they look as well I've got some very very cute elephants and I'm going to show you in the bag first because I need to get them out and show you now these were bought to be stitch markers but again, they could be earrings too. It doesn't like focusing when I go really close. They're little elephants. These are made of howlite. So it's a lovely turquoise type colour. And it's got the veining in there as well. Now I have two lots left. I have some larger pieces. I can't remember what stone these are. I think they might be howlite. No! They're not how I, I think these are chrysocolla. Or are they faux jet? Faux jet? They might be turquoise actually. They're really big slabs. And they do have a drill hole. But it's this way. So the drill hole is between my fingers at the top. So it goes from left to right through the middle. Or near the top of the middle. Um, and I've got five of those they're all slightly different in shape and slightly different in colour as well so we have this one and that's the back we have I think that one's probably the right one with this one and again the back this one's more like an octagon shape which is really cool look at that colour on the back of that look it's so cool and then this one with a hole in it so there we go so that one you can see the veining quite proud on there I just think they're really cool I love getting larger pieces I mean just stringing that on a piece of wire and then a chain that's a perfect quick make um, and that's what I love about getting the larger slabs like that Especially if they've got one drill hole. Even if they didn't have a drill hole, I'd wire up them. But where they've got the one hole, it'd be really cool to um, to see what they're going to look like. Now I might even put them on a fake suede. Now the last thing I have in here, this is the last thing out of all the jewellery purchases and bead purchases recently. These are pumpkin beads made of carnelian. Now I originally bought them because I wanted to make them into um, stitch markers for Halloween. But Halloween's now gone. It's now November. And I've got how many? There's a few different sizes in here. I'm going to show you the whole bag. I mean, look at those. Aren't they really cute? And the drill hole goes right through the very centre of them. So I'm hoping. Yeah, it goes right through the very centre. You see the hole? There you go. So they'll hang this way up or that way up with the hole going through the very center down and i could do because there's a couple of different sizes i could stack them it's got a little pumpkin stack see got a small pumpkin and a big pumpkin little pumpkin big pumpkin pumpkin stack um <laughs> so there's quite a few in there actually how many have we got? I may have asked for like a selection of probably 20, maybe 30. 
And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. There's 19 in there. No, 20. There's 20. So I've got a mixed bag of 20. I'm hoping that I might be able to get a couple of pairs for earrings or a couple of pairs for um, a set of stitch markers. Um, so any of my knitting and crochet buddies, my followers and subscribers, check these out when they go up live. Um, I've started to put some more bits on my Facebook page. So I recently put up a load the, all the zipper charms on there. Um, so yeah, that is it. Those are my four three little parcels and my bag of goodies from the Totally Beads store in Clapton. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of those and all the different stones. I will check my invoices and my receipt to see exactly what stones they all are. Um, and I'll put a link in the description below for both the D stash group for Victoria Millington on Facebook and Totally Beads website as well. So if you are looking to purchase some beads, if you even if you're on a class of mine and you want to know where to get some beads from in preparation for it, I'm quite happy for you to bring your own. Um, it makes my life a lot easier and it also means that you get to work with what you want to work with and not what I give you. Um, even though apparently I have quite a lot. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this, remember thumbs up and click subscribe for me. My numbers have been increasing, which is great. So I'm hoping that I might be able to hit 100 before Christmas and you never know, there might be a little giveaway on here. So remember to share as well and we'll see that number grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.